Good evening and welcome to the WDSU News Hot Seat. I'm Travers Mackle. Tonight we're talking about a very important topic for the city of New Orleans. It kicks off on Monday. We have two very special guests here. The Orleans Parish Chief Public Defender, Derwin Button, and the District C Council Person, Kristen Palmer. First up, thank you for being here. Thanks for having us. This campaign that starts on Monday is the Know Your Rights campaign. First off, out the gate, we're going to get an answer from both of you all. But we'll start with you, Derwin, and then go with you, Ms. Palmer. What is the Know Your Rights campaign? Know Your Rights for, for us is an outreach and education campaign for our community to talk about our criminal justice system many times Folks talk about the criminal justice system, but don't really know that much about it and don't know their rights in relation to it. So this is our attempt to be more interactive, more uh, proactive with our community and letting them know just what the system entails and how you should behave when you're confronted or come in contact with criminal justice system. Is that important that if somebody is stopped by a police officer, we're in the holiday season now, that they know how to handle, handle themselves and what to do? Absolutely. I mean, at any time you look at it, I think information is powerful. Um, it also helps in any situation. It gives you a point of reflection and how to handle yourself in a situation. And, you know, in our populations, you know, a lot of my efforts are really being focused on, on juvenile justice. And when we talk about young people, you know, that could be a very intimidating situation. And, and often you have a very small time to react or, or to, to make a decision. And so I think it's really important for people to, and especially our young people, to really be able to understand how our criminal justice system works. We're going to let people know in a second when the event is on Monday, but does it cut both, both ways? Does this also help citizens, but does it also help police officers? Because if they come into contact with somebody who knows how to handle themselves, does it cut both, both ways with that? Absolutely. I mean, it's beneficial for all parties involved. This isn't, this isn't specifically targeted one person to one group of folks. It's, it's open, um, just like you said in your earlier comments, it's open to the entire public. It's going to be at the Algiers Regional Library um, on Monday evening at 6 o'clock. So we really uh, would love everyone to be able to come. Why did you get involved with this, Darwin? Well, what we were finding out in dealing with our clients and our clients' families and the communities that we come in contact with, there's just a lot of mythology around the system. But there's also a lot of, of ignorance, really, when it comes to what are your rights. When you, when you interact with different parts of the criminal justice system, what exactly are you due in terms of process? And at the same time, when you have street interactions, understanding that the, the jobs that police are called upon to do are very difficult. How do you make those interactions safer for you and for the police? Uh, mm -hmm. And you do that through, through knowledge and through programs like this, so you understand that they have a very difficult job to do. This is what they're confronting from day to day. And here's how you can confront that uh, in a more respectful way and at the same time making sure you keep your own rights protected. We'll start with you, Ms. Palmer, and then have you answer this as well, Derwin. But Everybody has a voice these days. There's social media, there's Twitter, there's Facebook, there's Instagram. People call your offices mm -hmm. constantly. What are some of the big concerns that you're hearing from people in the community when it comes to this issue? I hear a lot from the perspective of how do we, we prevent folks from getting within the criminal justice system if they don't belong in the criminal justice system, right? Because often, and, and I'm going to pivot again back to, to juvenile justice, you know, I always look for places where we can go that we're not criminalizing kids. Right, so because if we criminalize children, they're going to wind up as criminals. And, and, this, and the data really shows that when you do bring them, say, to the youth, um, the youth center, youth study youth center, center right. exactly, the bayou. Right. you have, when you start criminalizing kids, they have about 34, well over 30 percent rate of reincarceration as adults. So for me, it's really important to look, let's look at our base levels, let's find other resources for our kids. I advocated in this past budget season for, for more money to go to, to youth opportunity centers, places that are run by like Covenant House and other places where police can actually drop them off there as opposed to a, a criminalized environment, um, especially when we're talking about potential crimes that, that really are not, that are nonviolent. And that's really what we're trying to, to really help here. Is that also the same for you, Derwin? What's the, what's the number one reason? What are the most calls or emails that you all get when it comes to people who have an issue with this, not knowing their rights or dealing with things in the community? Well, I don't know if there's any number one issue, but they're, they're sort of grouped in, in a box of just law enforcement interaction. And that can be with police, that can be with prosecutors, that can be with investigators for prosecutors. It can be with our own people from, from time to time at the public defender's office. And they're simply 
they're not, they don't know what they're supposed to do, how they're supposed to respond. They get pieces of paper, they don't know what they mean. Uh, they're asked to do things they don't know if they should. Um, and programs like this help us in terms of community relations with the mm -hmm. different parts of the crim criminal justice system. Just as Kristen was talking about, adolescents are a particularly volatile part of our community when it comes to those interactions. You know, kids are impulsive. Uh, mm -hmm. Some of our kids, quite, quite honestly, uh, see police and just for no reason will start running, right? So it's, it's one of those things kids, where... They make mistakes. <laughs> they make mistakes. Kids, they make mistakes. They don't even... They may not have done anything wrong and they'll take off running because they see law enforcement. Programs like this let, lets our, our young people know as well as the adults who are called upon to take care of them, hey, here, here's your rights. Here's how an interaction can go well. Here's some things you can do to make sure that happens. And this program is, I think, going to demystify a lot of what people believe can and can't be done by law enforcement. You represent District C, which mm -hmm. is a wide, diverse district. It hits yeah. Algiers, the Marigny, the French mm -hmm. Quarter, parts of Treme and Mid-City. You represent the entire parish of Orleans, which is the city of New Orleans. Is this something that you all would both like to see grow and not just be in District C in Algiers, but should it be done in every council district and citywide in upcoming years? I know this is the second year, but is, how big would you like to see this get? I, I think, it, I think again, I'm going to go back to my original comments. I, I do think that knowledge is important for everyone, and, and, I, and education is hugely important. Programs like this are very important because they're proactive. You know, we get into such a stance where everything is reactionary. By the time, you know, a young person makes that mistake and then become criminalized or they get into a system where they don't belong, then, then we're dealing with these problems for years, you know, and, and so when we talk about this, this type of program, I, I would love to see it replicated everywhere. When I heard about it, and I heard when the first program was at Dillard University, it was really important for me to bring it to Algiers because, you know, we, we are often so separated from the rest of the city and we don't have good transportation options. And, and also for people to get to these types of services are very difficult. So it w I would love to see it. I'd love to see it in New Orleans East. You know, I'd love to see it in Central City, just all over, just to really be in access and to help. Would that be beneficial if it grows citywide eventually? I think it's absolutely beneficial to grow citywide. I think it should be something that's incorporated in every council district. I think we should expand to, to partnerships with the school board and school and different schools around the city to make it part of their programs there to let particularly young people know what their what their rights are within the system and what the system looks like. You know, yeah. often they hear they hear me talk about gaps in our system, how there's not enough funding, what the what that looks like. And this really allows them the opportunity, the, them being our community at large, to really reach out and touch some of us who are in the system and ask us, okay, so what does what does those those lack of resources look like? What do these lack of investments really look like? How do they affect me? How do they affect us? Um, what what do you mean when you talk about a user pay justice system? Uh, and I'm I'm able to talk to people not through a camera but one on one about well when you have a system that is is built the way it is these are some of the gaps that happen but these are also your rights within it and demystify a little bit of that making it a little less intimidating and upping the chances of positive interactions with it and just to bring this up too it's in algiers but it's open to anybody Correct. people can come from Absolutely. uptown central city gentilly new orleans east the lakefront and go to this now i know you're encouraging people to do that are police on board with this? Is the sheriff's office on board with this? Will there be representatives there from those entities? Because like we just talked about earlier, this does cut both ways. Would you like to see them on board if they're not already on board with this? Well, I'd, I'd love to see everybody partner in this. I know we get, uh, as a system, many times it's, we get a bad rap for our lack of cooperation. Uh, but I think this is something that once we uh, once we get through it, and I think we need community to come and give their input, and so that folks can understand that this is this is re this is pure outreach, pure education. That we there's no problem in partnering and getting folks involved at, at all different kinds of levels to make sure our community knows what's going on with their system. Really quickly, final question because we are running out of time here. Your budget this year was. <laughs> by the council and the administration went up. You've, you, you, you mentioned the fact that you've fought about budget issues before. Does, does that help situations like this? You've both touched about, talked about gaps in the system and lack of funding. 
the fact that you're getting some more money this year, and both of you all can address this, does that help address situations like this? Well, I, I think so. Um, I think that um, the, the fact that it was in the news and that it's something that is sort of top of mind for a lot of people helps frame the, the program and helps frame uh, our outreach for this, but it also gives us an opportunity to really talk about the reforms we need. We have a system that hasn't changed uh, in terms of its structure for resourcing and funding for about 50 years or so now. And so we really need to address how we, how we have a fully functioning uh, criminal justice system, one that has equity built in, that is fair and just for all our citizens. And this gives folks an opportunity to learn about that. It gives us an opportunity to help teach folks about that. And it was Palmer, you obviously were one of the ones who, who helped get Mr. Button more money here. Right, and him and as well as other diversionary programs. And I think, I think the bottom line is look at the equitable distribution of resources, right? We want to have an equitable justice system. The way we utilize our resources should show that and should be reflective of that. The, the most important thing that this country has been based on is our, is our justice system. If you have a system that is um, funded inequitably and is based in inequity, we're going to have inequitable results. And I think everybody knows in the city that we have inequitable results. And if we've been doing something the same way for 50 years, we really need to figure out a better way. Because at the end of the day, the resources that we're expending in, in the public justice world and in the criminal justice world and the juvenile justice world are very unfair. And we're putting so much money in there and we're not getting the results that we need. I mean, I think we are moving forward in a very smart way. Um, and you're talking to somebody who also increased you know, the police department's right. budget. So all I'm saying is we just need to make sure that all the arms of our justice system are equitably distributed. All right. She's Kristen Palmer, New Orleans City Councilwoman Thank for you. District C. He's Derwin Button, the Chief Public Defender. That's all the time we have for the hot seat. You can see this entire interview on WDSU.com and, of course, on all of our social media platforms starting Monday morning. I'm Travers Mackle. Let's send it back to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, I'm running.
Again, breaking right now for the first time. This is a live look at the scene in Jefferson Parish where a deputy was shot on Veterans Memorial Boulevard. A heavy police presence right now because the suspect still on the loose. A massive manhunt underway. We're told a helicopter up in the sky right now trying to search for that suspect. Several blocks on Veterans are closed down right now as that search is actively continuing. Here's what I know about the deputy. We know he's being taken to University Medical Center, but no word on his condition at this time, but new information uh, coming in right now on the suspect. So here's what I know. Uh, the suspect told to be 5'9", about 200 pounds, a man with facial tattoos. Uh, so still information coming in. This is a developing story, but again, a live look here at the scene. It looks like this is on Veterans right outside the Wyndham Gardens. I'm told it's on the Lakeside Mall uh, side of Veterans right there, but a heavy police presence. You can see the crime tape is up. A Jefferson Parish deputy has been shot, but no word on his condition. He was rushed over to University Medical Center where we have a second crew on the way. Again, the suspect though still at large. That's why there's such a heavy police presence right now trying to find that suspect. We're going to continue bringing you breaking updates tomorrow morning starting at 430. But of course, we are always online updates there on WDSU.com. Thank you for staying with us again. Updates coming as soon as we have them online and on air. Have a good night.